gentlemen. All right. Got your Jeremy. Beers here for you. Let's go, dude. How are we doing? We're doing good, yeah, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Awesome. Good, good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Purple over beers here from Red Cow. Cheers, you guys. Cheers, Absolutely. We're going to talk some, some purple while enjoying while you guys are sipping. I'll sip yeah, too. I'll sip too. Sip. I was say, Come on, man. I didn't go mm-hmm. down enough. Well, I'm trying to do oh, the good. intro and sip hey, You do what time. you got to do, okay? You know, I'm a broadcast professional. Purple over beers from Red Cow, uh, where we kick around various Vikings topics, enjoy some of the great food from our friends at Red Cow. Oh, yeah. Buffalo oh, wings. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Cheese curds, triple berry ketchup. Got the blue cheese there for you. I love it. Wow. Salivating over yeah, here. I, I, and celery yeah. sticks, too. Good Dude, That's right. The celery good. sticks. A little Great side, sa- little plan, side salad improved. here yeah. with your with your wings. A little chips and dip. You know, people say, like, chips and dip. Not until you've had the red yeah, cow. Yeah, those ones. Look at that. That's not, really that's not an ordinary wow. chip. 640, smoked pepper aioli, three sweet potato fries. Wow, okay. All right. Let's rock and roll here. Good. Yeah. These are, you guys can't have any of these. No, no. Yeah. Hey. Double barrel action. House ketchup for your fries. Absolutely. There you and go. And a turkey yeah, burger, truffle oh. aioli for your truffle fries. There you go. Love it, man. Okay. Thank How's you. that looking Jeremy, for y'all? Oh, it looks great. I think we're looking pretty awesome. good. Looking Excited. pretty good? Thank you, man. Sweet. Yeah. By the way, real quick question. Um, 2009 Minnesota Vikings. Why do you guys think that's one of the most popular teams in franchise history? Jeremy, we're glad you asked. We're glad you asked about the 2009 Vikings. It's going to cause me to have to take a sip of beer. Yeah, me too, yeah. actually. Yeah. A lot of, um, a lot of stress out. in 2009. Perfect. Y'all enjoy yeah. that. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You, yeah. So... First of all, I feel like we bring on fans for event line and fans for write that down. And we always ask, or what's your background as a Vikings fan? Right. And the two most common answers we get for when did you become a Vikings fan are 98. That's sort of me. Mm-hmm. You're a little bit like well, kind of just between 98 and 09. Yeah. But 09 is probably the most popular. I became a Vikings fan in 2009. And then they rip my heart out at the end of the season, right? Right. Like what? I mean, we I think we know the why because Brett Favre came in, right. and, and took the city by storm. But yeah, what do you remember? You covered that team as the lead beat writer for the Star Tribune. You know what's funny about that year is I, I always actually go back to two thousand and eight when Favre got traded to the Jets because people forget like the Vikings were actively trying to get him then. And, and although they, they were eventually cleared of tampering charges, I don't know how they were because they and you know the Packers, not surprisingly, were like, "We are not going to trade you there." Yeah. And and Favre was like, "No, it's a perfect you know it's a West Coast offense, and more importantly, I want to stick it to you. So I want to go. So like it started then, but Phil, you know that last training camp practice in Mankato remains the all timer because Brett was not going to Mankato. And you remember Tavares was skipping Sage, our buddy Sage, Sage is skipping passes. <laughs> yeah, and and we're like, holy cow, this team is really good. They don't have a quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, it was like all, well, as Brett said, all the pieces are in, the pieces are in place. But what's funny is, and I don't know how much you knew that's a good question for you, I guess. Because I was watching that practice. I was covering for uh, KFXN radio at the time. And as I watched that terrible practice, I thought, wow. This is a problem for the Vikings because I didn't know that Brett Favre was on the way. All the reports were like, "Hey, it's kind of kind of a dead done deal." Yep. But did they did they know that he was coming to save the day while they were going through this trunk, uh, clunky training camp? So, I don't know the answer, but I think that they did. It's weird because if you guys recall, it was July at some point when my former friend Brad Childress called me and said he's not coming. It's not going to happen. And so we all went, you know, and, and, and now in retrospect, I think what he said is, I ain't coming to Mankato. Yeah. So what was funny about that whole thing was at the end of that practice, so I think it was the last practice in Mankato, and it was a gong show. Like, literally, passes are skipping off the ground. No faith in John David Booty. I, I can't believe this. He was there, too, right? Yeah, he, I think he had to I think he was yeah. off I don't think corner. he was lighting it up. Yeah. He, I, he, he thought, was, this is going to be my chance right yeah, now. Yeah. That's great. And and so... He had to give up his number. He did. He was a casualty. <laughs> if, well, yeah. He was. But if you but yeah. if, if you recall, though, Phil, at the end of that practice, Brad Childress spoke. And Chip and I have always talked about this. Scoggins was like, he's going to be livid. This is going to be great. And we go, and Brad's like totally calm, yucking it up with us. And we're like, something's going on yeah, here. Why he's, too, he's way too at peace. Yeah, why are you so at peace? So I do think that by that point, just like in, two, in 2010, 
I think they continue to send the bat signal out because it's like this is this is too. What is the Brett Favre bat signal, by the way? Is it just like well, in 2010 we sent a guy in a Wrangler. It's, a, it's, a, it's like or, a silhouette of a guy in cutoff shirts and a very dirt old. You thing. know what it was? Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> it was a silhouette of Ted Thompson, the Packers GM, because Favre was so anxious to stick it to we'll him. Stick it to him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, like, and we were talking before we even got the food here, too, about the chapters of that season. Yeah. And to me, like, the first chapter was Favre arrives. There's a guy in a chicken suit. It was crazy. It was like you had Channel 5 following in a helicopter, yep. the SUV. It was like the OJ chase. But yeah. it was like Brad Childress. Yeah, <laughs> Childress pulled onto the tarmac in his SUV at Holman Field in St. Paul. And I'm not joking. Put the seat all the way back. So the media couldn't like, couldn't like catch that mean. Yeah. So he like <laughs> no one could see Brad because he was like laying down and yeah. waiting for Brett Favre to come in. But so you had that. Then you had. Uh, I might be forgetting some, but I think like one of the chapters early was because we didn't know if Brett could actually play. Still, right. he was coming off the surgery. You had so you had like Adrian Peterson stiff arming the entire Browns defense in one of the games. Yep. You had early on the Greg Lewis game and yeah. chapter, one of the greatest plays in Vikings history. And then what other chapters stand out from that season? What am I missing? Well, I mean, so, like, you guys were on the beat then. You were kind of early into it, just a season vet. I mean, I was in high school. I was in 11th grade. I was a junior in high school. So I'm at the peak of my fandom, basically, right here. And that Greg Lewis catch, too, I remember being a, a big staple. But I think also the next Jack was probably, right, the Monday butt-kicking against the Packers yes, at yes. the Metrodome, which there was nerves and there was all sorts of things going on. Wasn't that the same week as Game 163 Twins? Game 163 Tiger. was the next day, right? The next, it was yeah, Tuesday, yeah, right? Yeah, Tuesday, right. yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. they had to play the Monday night Vikings, right. and then they had to wait a day for Game 163. Yeah. Yeah, and then the Twins got drunk and, like, were hung over for it the It was a great week at game. Play. You would take that weekend in a heartbeat now. Yes. Yes, you would. Yeah. Yes, you would. Which is funny because, like, 15 years later, one of the great 48-hour stretches in modern Minnesota sports history is a non-playoff game Twins game. Yep. And a week four Vikings game. Yep. Like, we need to get some actual playoff success in here yep. at some point. Well, and two, you know what? The San Francisco game was just great. Like, on its face, it was great. But, if, but you know, you go back to that Browns game, and then the week two, they went and played at Detroit. And those two games, Favre literally managed them. Like, yeah. it was the AP show. And so we're all like, oh, you know, this is the new Brett Favre. No dumb passes, no theatrics, no nothing. He's just going to be sort of the glue guy. He's a, he's a game and then, manager. And then he threw the and, – and we wrote about that. And I remember you could sort of tell he was not happy. Like, yeah. like he wasn't mad at us. He's just like, oh, no, there's a lot more. <laughs> and the Greg Are Lewis pass. game manager now? Take yeah, your game manager. All healthy. Shove I mean, it. All play. I remember talking to him about that though. Like we asked him questions about, you know, you're doing a really good job with managing the game. Yeah. And then the Greg Lewis throw, which I think to this day, if we were to break down like memorable throws in Vikings history, it's up there. It's, it's up there. It, yeah, it's top five. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay. Do they fast forwarding? I think we all agree on this. They would have beat the Colts, right? Yes. If, they, if he doesn't really make the self far better chance throw. They have a far better chance to beat the Colts than, in my opinion, the 98 team did to beat the Broncos. Yes, because the because the 98 team was, wasn't John Randall hurt? Yep. They had Ed like, McDaniel, like, torn his knee. Yeah. They had a lot of issues. And that was a Broncos team with one LA. of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Yeah, and yep. One of the greatest tight ends, running backs of all time, yep. defense. Uh, we actually had Terrell Davis on our old radio show uh -huh. like six years ago. And we asked him, do you think if you had played the Vikings in the Super Bowl, would would the Vikings have beat you? And of course, he said no. No, the Broncos won. won. But I, I, I mean, that that Colts team that the Saints wound up beating in the Super Bowl is a good team. But uh, I think that would have been the Vikings first. If Favre, if he just slides forward and they give Ryan Longwell a shot, if they just don't put well, Tahi in the huddle, like if... if coming if, out of a timeout. Yeah. That's the other thing. How do you have... I, I mean... Not to scratch open some old wounds here. How do you have 12 men in the huddle out of a timeout, which gave you all the time in the world to make sure you didn't screw that up? Yeah, I think if you even just showed without Minnesota sports fans, and I think some diehard NFL fans could pick it up, if you just showed box score, no score, who won this game? Between oh, the yes, Saints it's, and the Vikings, it's crazy, dude. I would think 90% of people would say, yep. I bet the Vikings, yep. I bet this team that had double the yards, double everything, yep. I won the game, right? No. It's, it is like to that point. 
it is one of the craziest. If you if you don't show turnovers, obviously. Yeah, true. The Vikings like doubled up the Saints in yardage, and that was a good Saints offense. Really good Saints team. That's prime Drew Brees. They had Reggie Bush clicking as their sort of secret weapon in the backfield. Sean Payton. Yeah, it was it five or six turnovers. Peterson. Yep. Percy um, Harvin's first of the entire season. First turnover, first, yep. first fumble. Berrien dropped a ball Berrien dropped near the goal. goal line, right? And yeah. and even, not even a turnover, but the Ben Lieber pass interference call, too. Pass interference yeah. call against Lieber. Because he didn't turn around, it was a bad call. Didn't turn around, his back, which is also well, rough. And then there, there's the missed exchange at the, at the end of the first half. I think Bush had fumbled a punt, right? And the Vikings had the ball like the 10 yes. of the Saints. And there was a missed exchange between Favre and Peterson. If they don't have that and they score a touchdown... That game is going basically the Vikings' way from there on out. But the other, the other interesting thing about that season is if you go to any other fan base, not any other, but go to, like, Boston fans or go to New York Giants fans, they measure their sports history with dates and plays that are positive, right? Right. Oh, man, that 07 season, that, that 11 season, if you're the Giants or if you're the Patriots, was it the first uh, dynasty or the back half of the dynasty, <laughs> yeah. or was it right? And for Vikings fans and Vikings media and Vikings employees, we measure it with negative years. You can yep. literally connect with any Vikings fan yep. in America and say, "Ooh, '09," right? With like a grimace or Drew Pearson '98 in '75. Yeah, se- oh, the '75. <laughs> yeah, or a or a play of some kind. Like Darren a, Nelson doesn't catch the ball in Washington. Yeah, wide left here, there. Yeah, no question about it. And and it goes beyond that. You've got Sam Cassell doing a dance on the court. Yeah, the, yeah, the big. Well, you got Joe Mauer. You got Joe Mauer with a fair ball that's called a foul ball. I mean, you're right. I know. So yeah, I think. I mean, I hope that answers the question. But I think for all of those reasons, that's why the 09 season is really. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to compare the 70s because there's such a gap in eras. But right. it is definitely it is up there for most memorable Viking season. I will, Gentlemen, I will wrap this up by saying one last thing. If Brett Favre wins a Super Bowl, is his number four retired in Green Bay right now? And more importantly, is it retired at U.S. Bank Stadium? Oh, it's at U.S. Bank. I think it's retired. Well, both. Both, right. But for sure here. Yeah. Like for U.S. Sure. Bank. Like U.S. Bank for sure. Yeah. How, uh, how was everything for y'all? Well, we're, so we just blabbed. Looking, looking the beer's on. good. Yeah. We're looking Beer's forward good. to diving Can't into uh, cool. this amazing food right now. So, yeah. Thank Sweet. you, Jeremy. Sweet. Well, thank y'all for Cheers. coming by. Of course, man. Awesome, Cheers, you guys. Thank you. All right. Purple over beers here at Red Cow.